sandy cold, salty kisses, seashell wishes. Well, my friends, we are today heading to one of the islands to look for some cool seashells. Of course, we're gonna find some of the nubbit walks, nub walks, nubbit walks, or however you want to say it. Today we are here, we found some slipper, snails, jingles, put them in your hand, if you take some of them in your hand and shake them, you hear the sound of jingling sound, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day today, so I think uh, it's really, uh, the camera is raining right now, I'm kind of wet, no matter what I use to wipe the front of the lens, it seems like everything is wet. Now I'm using GoPro, so it was raining earlier and just I have, you see a couple of drops of uh, water on top of my uh, lens, but soon actually that will uh, go away because I wiped it with something different. Um, but for now, I'm sorry about this, a little bit of drops of water on my lens, it kind of gives it a little bit of character. You can see that it was raining. But nothing stopped us to really go out and find some shells. A baby horse cow is a live one. This one is alive. They are usually that color, orange color. We're gonna let that one just go there and wait for the tide to come and take it back. We have been really picking up all kind of shells, but there is one thing fact about seashells. The first worldwide currency was not crypto, but it was a white seashell. Money coward. Now one thing is about uh, the toothpaste crest. Um, yeah, all of you guys probably know what that is, uh, Crest, C-R-E-S-T. You guys know that Crest actually, one of the ingredient, main ingredient in that is calcium carbonate. Now, why do they add that to it? You have to know that uh, humans have been brushing their teeth with seashells since at least the ancient Greeks. They crushed oyster shells into toothpaste and they use them to brush their teeth. So all of these seashells and oyster shells and all that, it has been used for a lot of things and one of them it was to make a toothpaste. And what I have here is a tulip. The one on the right is a true tulip, the one on the left is a banded tulip. Uh, true tulips are very aggressive, they eat other snails, they will eat banded tulips. They are beautiful colors, but they are a little bit more aggressive than uh, uh, banded uh, tulip. Uh, you see the color, the difference between them now here? I think both of them are beautiful, they just different uh, they have different kind of attitude, I would guess, because one of them is more aggressive than the other one. That. Uh, that's a slipper snail. Most likely it's a female. You know how they change their sex. They are born as male and they change it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I just moved quick. Cut my, uh, my attention here because I'm oh, like something moved. Well, that hermit crab, he must have been moving here. Uh, he's in there. Uh, there is another one here. He has some barnacles on top of it. Uh, 
water is getting warmer now it's like you know middle of march right now soon there will be a lot more hermit crabs moving around here there's a hermit crab on this one here they come here and fight uh, over shells and they fight each other <laughs> they are cute to be watched If I want to keep any of these shells, what I do, I'll take them and then I put them in one place, one spot, and then 10 minutes later come and check and see if they move. Um, because sometimes it's hard to tell if there is really hermit crab on them, especially if there is a smaller hermit crab inside one of them, you can't see it. So what I do, I just leave them in one spot. 10 minutes later, I come and see if it did move, that means there was a hermit crab in there. But I still also check them when I go home to make sure I didn't take any hermit crabs, live hermit crabs home. Uh, you know, I, I like the shells, but I don't want to take a uh, live hermit crab, live anything in them. So. I can see something big right now, right in front of us. And what is that? A rock? And, uh, no, it's not a rock. Actually, it's a walk. It's a big one. <laughs> I don't need to carry any of it. So I'm going to just look at it. Look at it. That thing is really big. is a live one. Oyster drill. And they really drill a hole in oysters. In some areas they are really invasive. They got introduced to Europe and people farms over there, oyster farms, they hate them. They don't like them because they ruin their whole farm. I think they are beautiful. They are, they are actually native to this area here in Carolinas, but uh, some other areas they don't like them. I don't see them all over uh, in Carolinas. I've been all, uh, all the way to North Carolina, all the way. I, I always see them like around uh, Charleston County more than anywhere else. But most of this one that I'm getting now, they are hermit crabs, and I barely found actually live snails of the oyster drills. Um, not sure why, I just, uh, maybe I don't look at them in oyster beds or they blend in. So, I'm just going to take them close to the water here. Now, so this is a cockle here. See how big this cockle shell is? And if you have a cockle shell, sometimes you can use it to put your shells in it. I'm just showing you an example here. You can lose it, use it like a cup. The Native Americans, they used them before and um, to drink from it and they use them for food. Uh, so you could use that uh, for uh, to carry your stuff. Or if you wanna drink water from it, clean it. What is that? Look at this sea urchin. Well, we are finding more life stuff today on the beach than we did a month ago. So water is getting warmer. Another, another oyster drill. Now we are here playing with the shells like a kid. Now, we are in Carolinas, and Carolinas is famous for uh, pirates. Now one thing I learned about the piracy, 
that the youngest pirate in the history was a kid by the name John King. Well, John King was not a pirate in Carolinas. Uh, he became a pirate in, uh, around Cape Cod. He joined uh, a pirate Samuel Black Sam Bellamy. When uh, Bellamy captured the, the ship when uh, John King was on it, John King decided that he would want to be a pirate. He was between 8 and 11 years old and they told him no and he said if you don't take me to be as a pirate then I will uh, kill myself or my mother. So finally they said okay you can join, you can be a pirate. He was the youngest pirate, known pirate on record. In 1717, pirate uh, Bellamy captured a ship, it's called Wida, and, um, and he actually used it, claimed it as his flagship, but and, um, that was in February 1717, in April of 1717, the Wida ship was wrecked in a storm off the coast of Cape Cod. Everybody on that ship was uh, killed, um, including uh, our young John King. So here is how it goes. In 2006, they believed that they found Wider, and then they found partial human remains of a young boy in that uh, ship. So they believed that was uh, John's remains. And it was, uh, he was not uh, an adult, he was a young boy, about the same age as uh, John King. Now let's go back to our shelling. <laughs> This one is fossilized. You see all of those uh, bivalves in it. That thing is like a rock. I didn't used to give attention to them before. I used to see them all over. But in this one here, in this piece here, I don't know what it is. It's like a rock mixed with something shiny. I don't know if it's coal. I don't know what it is. I just, I think it's really cool and unique. For many years, I used to walk these beaches and never looked really close to seashells and some stuff. I just walked and uh, now I'm giving a little bit more attention to things that I see. And I'm getting a little bit more uh, interested in that. And uh, this one is beautiful piece of oyster. Many people actually take those sort of oysters and, uh, you know, they put them in display, they put air plants on them. You see that I'm finding a lot of these shells. I am actually on top of the uh, of the shells, and most of these shells here, all of them actually here, they are all clean and dead. Now, if I come here after a storm, right on the top there'll be a lot of live ones, and I end up really taking them back and putting them back in the you know in the water. This one has a crack on it. I thought I'd do this to it. Is that cool? 
that's really nice One of my favorite things here is angel wings. Angel wings, and uh, they can they use them actually as food in Cuba and Puerto Rico. They are very fast growing species of clams. So they are trying to really do commercial agriculture of them. They are investigating, they are trying to learn about them, to use them more for food. I like them. They kind of look like angel wings like the one we see in pictures or drawings that you know that we have i'm really not keeping these shelves i'm just taking them putting them on that pile that i have so i can take a good picture for the cover photo and soon you're gonna see them all in one picture You guys see I'm really playing with these shells putting them here and putting them there and what we have here is another mussels a piece of driftwood who knows some people collect them for art and craft I was picking up last like a few videos ago I, I was picking them up for a friend of mine I don't know if she made anything out of it or no, but soon hopefully I can get a picture so I can share it with you guys. Another beautiful angel wing. We've seen the color of whelks and how they are. And look at this one. Why does this one look really cool, brown, grayish color? I have no idea. It could be buried in the mud and it got the color from the mud. But it's really, I like those colors. Oh boy, what's that? That's uh, like angel wing covered with all kind of barnacles and uh, all kind of stuff. This, these warm stones are everywhere. I remember many years ago when I was uh, traveling in Indian Ocean, people would use, were using those tube worms as a thing to scrape their foot, to clean their foot, you know, from all of the uh, you know dry skin and all that that's what they were using I guess you can use it to sand something with it not fine but you can clean something with it looks like a piece of art. <laughs> That's so beautiful. The shell is very thin. It's a lot thinner than the well. Oh, and this one. What is this? Oh, a piece of glass. Who knows what it's from? The bottle or... Nobody knows. I don't even know what it is from. It does have some texture to it cool designs but we're gonna take that with us and uh, put it in the trash a piece from a horse car huh. it looks like he had better days now these pieces you know from this conch and whelks and all of that they break that's natural that's why the sand on the beach is there it's all from the shells broken shells
Did you guys see that I'm picking up the squelks? Different ones. Because every one of them has different color. Every one of them has different color and colors and all that cool and uh, it is really cool every one of them is different look at that one it's black and brown and i'm doing all of this piling it so i can do my whole picture of the cover that's why i was dead And once in a while I pick one of this that has a piece of dead walk on it. One small piece inside there. And then I pick it up and all of that water, the smelly thing comes out. And my hands will smell bad the whole time until I go back to my boat and wash them very good. The smell is really bad. Um, but if I see flies going around it I usually don't touch them but sometimes there are no flies and you pick them up and, uh, and he's like oh boy what did I just do that duck clam channel duck clam is very soft usually you don't see the whole piece on the beach usually you see him broken and all that but sometimes like today we just find the whole one This channel whelk looks like dark. It's because it probably was buried in the mud for a long, long time. And this one here, uh, guys, I'm really not sure what it is. If you guys have an idea, can you guys please comment? I'm not sure what it is. It could be rock snail or triton. I'm not familiar with it. I barely find them. Uh, I appreciate if you guys know what it is. If you can just comment. Now sometimes you don't have to look for big stuff. If you look around, you see some tiny stuff. The same shells that you see, you might find babies of the same shells laying around there. Another one of those rocks is fossilized worm stone. Like I said, I found people in some countries, they use them to, you know, sand stuff with, clean their foot from the dead skins. And I also have seen some areas in, um, overseas where people use them to build houses. And um, they use them to build houses. And it's very good insulation, I guess. I've seen big rocks of them. Sometimes I get questions from, uh, you know, from people who subscribe to my channel or who watch my channel that if I really keep any of these shells, I barely keep any of them. I just put them around, I take their pictures, and, uh, and they sit there. Uh, number one, I don't want to carry them. Number two, I really don't know what to do with them if I take them. And I'm just kind of limited how much I can take with me. It's, they are heavy. I just let them sit where they were and uh, enjoy them and, and now I started to do my videos so 
a YouTube channel, so it's really appreciate you guys watching this. I appreciate you guys watching with me. The Geoduck. I barely see many of them here. I uh, didn't know what they were for a long time until recently I looked in the book and uh, found out what they were. <laughs> On my last trip, I only picked a lot of angel wings for my friend and I had the whole big box for her. I don't know what she's making with them, but uh, look at this. They are I'm finding them everywhere. If you ever decide to really collect any of the angel wings, make sure you bring a special box or container with you. Because you can't mix them with other shells. They do break. So they are very thin, very delicate. So bring another container with you. Wild egg string or casing. The eggs probably uh, hatched and they are already gone. And you see how this thing, look at the oysters grew on top of the well. Oysters will grow on top of oysters, any hard surface, anything uh, like shells, oysters, clams. They grow, they grow on a lot of hard, hard surfaces. Another whelk here, I see this one here, it's a channel whelk with oysters grow on top of it. I have a friend that used to love collect them and she used to actually use them for air plants. It's just different. And there is another whelk here with the oysters uh, attached to it. Well guys, I appreciate you guys watching uh, and walking with me today, watching this video. And I appreciate without you guys, I would have not be doing what I'm doing now. I have new videos coming soon. There will be some cool stuff. It's getting warm outside. The weather is getting nice. So I will be going out uh, to more places. And hopefully we can find some new and cool shells. Thank you guys again. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for clicking like and notification button. Thank you guys. And... See you guys uh, in the next video.